Hello and welcome to Midweek Connection at First Presbyterian Church of San Angelo. It is Wednesday, August 3rd, and I'm Pastor Joel. And I'm Natalie. And we're here to do what we usually do on Wednesdays, and that is to read our daily lectionary text and then to have a little bit of discussion about it, but glad that you can join us today. Let me open us in a word of prayer, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Gracious Lord, thank you so much for this day and your ongoing word to us. Lord, thank you that you love us enough to guide us and to direct us. I pray, Lord, that as we read your word today, that you will be glorified and that we will be encouraged and everybody who's listening or watching uh, would themselves hear from you and that their lives will be changed as well. We thank you and we praise you. It is in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. We're going to start today with Psalm 96. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He is to be revered above all gods. For all the gods of the people are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. The world is firmly established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exalt and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he is coming, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Psalm 147, verses 1 through 11. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God, for he is gracious, and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the animals their food and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the speed of the runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him and those who hope in his steadfast love. Our Hebrew scripture passage today comes from Judges chapter 7, starting in verse 19 and going through chapter 8, verse 12. Uh, and forgive me if I uh, mispronounce any of these names that are included therein. So Gideon and the hundred who were with him came to the outskirts of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch, when they had just set the watch, and they blew the trumpets and smashed the jars that were in their hands. So the three companies blew the trumpets and broke the jars, holding in their left hands the torches, and in their right hands the trumpets to blow, and they cried, A sword for the Lord and for Gideon. Every man stood in his place all around the camp, and all the men in the camp ran. They cried out and fled. When they blew the three hundred trumpets, the Lord set every man's sword against his fellow and against all the army, and the army fled as far as Bethshetah towards Zerah, as far as the border of the Abel Meholah by Tabath. And the men of Israel were called out from Naphtali and from Asher and from all Manasseh, and they pursued after the Midian. Then Gideon sent messengers throughout all the hill country of Ephraim, saying, Come down against the Midianites and seize the waters against them as far as Beth Barah and also the Jordan. So all the men of Ephraim were called out, and they seized the waters as far as Beth Barah and also the Jordan. They captured the two captains of Midian, Oreb and Zeb. They killed Oreb at the rock of Oreb, and Zeb they killed at the winepress of Zeb. And they pursued the Midianites. They, bought, they brought the heads of Oreb and Zeb to Gideon beyond the Jordan. Then the Ephraimites said to him, 
What have you done to us not to call us when you went to fight against the Midianites? And they upbraided him violently. So Gideon said to them, What have I done now in comparison with you? Is not the gleaning of the grapes of Ephraim better than the vintage of, of, of Abiezer? God has given into your hands the captains of Midian, Oreb, and Zeb. What have I been able to do in comparison with you? When he said this, their anger against him subsided. Then Gideon came to the Jordan and crossed over, he and the three hundred who were with him, exhausted and famished. So he said to the people of Succoth, Please give some loaves of bread to my followers, for they are exhausted, and I am pursuing Zeba and Zalmunna, the kings of Midian. But the officials of Succoth said, Do you already have in your possession the hands of Zeba and Zalmunna, that we should give bread to your army? Gideon replied, Well then, when the Lord has given Zeba and Zalmanna into my hand, I will trample your flesh on the thorns of the wilderness and on briars. From there he went up to Penuel and made the same request of them, and the people of Penuel answered him as the people of Succoth had answered. So Gideon said to the people of Penuel, When I come back victorious, I will break down this tower. Now Zeba and Zalmanna were in Karkor with their army, about 15,000 men, all who were left of the army of the people of the east, for 120,000 men bearing arms had fallen. So Gideon went up by the caravan route east of Noba and Jogbaha and attacked the army, for the army was off its guard. Zeba and Zalmanna fled, and he pursued them and took the two kings of Midian, Zeba and Zalmanna, and threw all the army into a panic. And from the New Testament, we'll read Acts chapter 3, verses 12 through 26. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? And why do you stare at us as though by our, by our own power, our piety, that we made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name. His name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Messiah appointed for you, that is, Jesus, who must remain in heaven until the time of universal restoration that God announced long ago through his holy prophets. Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you from your own people a prophet like me. You must listen to whatever he tells you, and it will be that everyone who does not listen to that prophet will be utterly rooted out of the people. And all the prophets, as many as have spoken from Samuel and those after him, also predicted these days. You are the descendants of the prophets and of the covenant that God gave to your ancestors, saying to Abraham, And in your descendants all the families of the earth shall be blessed. When God raised up his servant, he sent him first to you to bless you by turning each of you from your wicked ways. And our gospel passage today is from John chapter 1, starting in verse 29 and completing in verse 42. The next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, 
John exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? Jesus said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. And now we'll read Psalm 132. O Lord, remember in David's favor all the hardships he endured, how he swore to the Lord and bowed to the mighty one of Jacob. I will not enter my house or get into my bed. I will not give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids until I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling place for the mighty one of Jacob. We heard of it in Ephrathah. We found it in the fields of Jar. Let us go to his dwelling place. Let us worship in his footstool. Rise up, O Lord, and go to your resting place, you and the ark of your might. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness, and let your faithful shout for joy. For your servant David's sake, do not turn away the faith. Do not turn away the face of your anointed one. The Lord swore to David a sure oath from which he will not turn back. One of the sons of your body I will set on your throne. If your sons keep my covenant and my decrees that I shall teach them, their sons also forevermore shall sit on your throne. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his habitation. This is my resting place forever. Here I will reside, for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless its provisions. I will satisfy its poor with bread. Its priests I will clothe with salvation and its faithful will shout for joy. There I will cause a horn to sprout up for David. I have prepared a lamp for my anointed one. His enemies I will clothe with disgrace, but on him his crowns will gleam. And our final psalm today is Psalm 134. Come, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, who stand by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands to the holy place and bless the Lord. May the Lord, maker of heaven and earth, bless you from Zion. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. You know, I don't really want to get a whole lot into the Gideon passage other than to think about how uh, looking at the Acts passage and the John passage where um, you know, John the Baptist identified by the Spirit revealing to him who Jesus was, that he was the Christ, that he was the Anointed One. Uh, but even in that, how John needed that knowledge of who Jesus was to be revealed to him. Right. You know, you know, he had heard from the Lord, the one on whom the Spirit descends, that is the Christ. And, and so uh, John said, I didn't know who it was going to be until it happened. And so after it happened, then he tells his disciples, well, there is the Lamb of God, and we see how Andrew goes to follow, and then Andrew uh, uh, inquires of Jesus, you know, where are you staying? That whole come and see, that, uh, that, that initial invitation that Jesus gives, uh, that I think is so important if we think about it from a, a missional or an evangelistic sharing of good news mindset. Um, what are we what are we invited to do? We're invited to come and see, you know, what is Jesus doing? Where is he staying? Where is he going? Uh, what is he what is he doing? Um, what is he calling us to do? Um, and so that come and see and then how Andrew goes and calls his own brother. You know, come and see. We found the Messiah. We found the anointed one. And uh, we see you know, the beginning then of Jesus ministry is needs to be revealed right. and then needs to be shared with others. We see in Acts uh, that you read, here is um, John, uh, sorry, here is Peter talking right. to the um, to the people in the temple about this man that they had healed. They had healed a crippled beggar and they don't know, well, by what authority have you done these things? You know, they can see the result of the actions 
but they need it explained to them. They right. need to hear that it's Jesus. It's in the name of Jesus that this uh, this healing took place. But it's not just Jesus detached from history. It's Jesus who is the fulfillment of the promise that God gave to Abraham and to Isaac and Jacob uh, that uh, Moses had had spoken of Jesus and therefore he is the fulfillment of these things. And I, and I start to wonder, maybe even with these two passages combined, um, how important it is for the people of God to, uh, one, to follow Jesus themselves, right. but to recognize that even our own knowledge is something that has been revealed to us. And then it is our responsibility to invite other people and to be re revealing it to them, trusting that it's the Holy Spirit that's going to have to speak into these people's lives. But by using the stories of Scripture to explain uh, what what exactly is happening or the stories of our own lives right. as related to what is happening because clearly God is uh, has impacted specific people at specific places at specific times for his purposes and why would he not be calling us to do the same right well and I think that's Yes, that's so much. So they, he uses in this Acts passage, he goes back and he uses, you know, Moses said, and in that context, that would have been something people would have respected that, would have given authority to Moses' voice. And he even goes to the crucifixion and he talks about that. But these people, this in that time, they would have lived this, they would have seen that, and so it gave them this context. But in both the John passage and the Acts passage, I think we can look at them just like what you're saying. One, things have to be revealed to us, and then two, we have a responsibility to testify. And sometimes that can be such an overwhelming, like how do we share our faith in the world? How do we step out and do that? How do we, what if they don't want to hear it? What if, you know, what if right. they reject it? And I think when we look at this, you see that as they're speaking with these, one, they're speaking to people that they have relationship with. Right. And so, um, and I think, and I think it was mentioned this morning in an earlier discussion that we were having, but sometimes we assume people believe certain things, mm -hmm. or we assume that people have knowledge about things, mm -hmm. and maybe they don't. But as Christ followers, as believers, um, called to share the news of the gospel, who is in our life, who are we in relation with that we can share with? And maybe you do, maybe you do share with someone who is already a believer, and so maybe you don't necessarily reveal to them, but you can serve as encouragement to mm -hmm. one another. And right. so, because I think that that's important too, because the world sometimes is, I mean, it's gonna beat us down. It's, you know, that's, you know, Christians sometimes get a bad, get a bad rap. Well, in the here's world. Peter and the other disciples right. coming in tension and conflict with these other yes. religious leaders. And and the same thing can happen to us. And so I think even whenever we share in testimony with fellow believers, that can give us the encouragement and that can give us the reassurance that then does allow us to go out into the world. Yeah. So I think it's, you know, it's how do you do this? I think there's something here. Right. And, and I think that's where I wanted to start with the John and the Acts passage because I think then jumping even back to that Gideon passage, uh, this is at the end of the Gideon cycle uh, in Judges, or towards the end of it anyway, but if you go back and read all of the ways that God had been speaking specifically to Gideon and how then Gideon has responded faithfully, and clearly even as Gideon is uh, being victorious over the enemies of Israel and calls other tribes of Israel to participate, they're going, well, why didn't you call us earlier? And why didn't you do this? And why didn't you do that? And he's just like, look, I'm following what God told me to do, and you're actually going to benefit from uh, the victory that God is working through this. And so it's interesting. So even as these other tribes are seeing uh, uh, Gideon's uh, you know, victory, and actually then participating even in Gideon's victory, there's still this weird tension. Like, rather than celebrating it, they're getting mad. Like, right. wait, the Midianites were oppressing everybody. 
Right. And now you're being set free, and you're bummed that you weren't on the initial right. decision Gideon. process. I was like, well, God revealed it to Gideon so that God would be glorified. Right. It's right. And they now wanted they're, glory for the things that they were doing, but. Right, God was being glorified, but they're looking for their own kind of thing, and Gideon's just like, well, if you don't want to participate in it, then you're going to not receive the blessings from it, might actually even get, you know, a little right. bit beat up yourself. Now, again, this is in the context of judges. It's right. not uh, normative in terms of that kind of behavior, but I think just the, the aspect of why is it so much in, in human society that unless... You know it, how hard it is to celebrate the successes of other people, right? Uh, and and crave that for yourself, even though within God's economy, within the kingdom of God, um, when when one part of the tribe is blessed, then actually the other parts are blessed as well, right? And one person's blessing doesn't take away from yes. the blessings that God can give to us. He doesn't right. have this finite amount of blessings to, to share. You know, well, oh, I already gave it away. Sorry. Right, right. It's, yeah, Gideon got it. Yeah. Ephraim didn't. When actually Ephraim were invited into it. Right. Right. So, uh, yeah, how crazy, human, how crazy humans are. Uh, and then even with... Um, you know, even with John the Baptist, how he so much exemplifies, uh, you know, the behavior that people of faith really should have. At least, you know, at least right here and right now, um, you know, he's got kind of a good thing going. You know, he's baptizing people. He's got a bunch of followers. He's preaching the word of the Lord. And Jesus shows up and John is like, hey, that's the guy you need to follow. Right. Stop Stop following me. I've done my job. I've done what I was asked I've to do. I've done what I was asked to do. I have fulfilled the mission that God has given me. And now it's all about Jesus. In fact, it's always all about Jesus. Jesus. And why is it today that there are so many people who, you know, they'll mention Jesus, but it's often all about themselves. And it's just like, wow, Lord have mercy. It's like, you know, let me be more like John the Baptist uh, in this context. Let me be more like Peter, uh, you know, proclaiming truth uh, as God would want us to have it. Let us be less like the Ephraimites or, you know, let us be less like the religious leaders in the temple who, you know, were really kind of, you know, self-centered right. as opposed to Jesus-centered. Mm. Yeah, always good stuff. I, uh, you know, when I first looked at these passages, I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do with a kid's <laughs> passage. But I think in light of uh, John and Acts, I think it kind of comes out. Yeah, anything else you want to add? Not today. Okay, not today. <laughs> That's great. Um, and, and one of the, and again, as you, if you've been watching long enough, know that there's a lot of repetition, at least on Wednesdays, for right. some of these psalms that we read. Uh, but I like when it kind of comes around to even just a very, very simple 134. Uh, and, you know, that's the final song that we read. And it's just those three verses. Um, you know, come bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord. And how when we bless the Lord um, that we ourselves receive a blessing. So, uh, Natalie, would you like to close us in prayer? I'd be happy to. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time today. We thank you for your word to us. And uh, I just ask that um, we be blessed by the words that we heard and that we be encouraged and challenged by what we hear when we read your word. Um, I pray that um, as we go out into the world that we look to glorify you in all that we do and that we step up and step out and take opportunities to, to testify for you and testify for um, your son Jesus and the um, incredible blessings and grace that you give to each of us. And that as we see others being blessed, that we celebrate in those blessings with them and that we lift up and encourage them and ultimately all in the name of glorifying you and what you have done for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. 
All right. Well, thanks for joining us today. We certainly do crave your uh, your comments or your concerns or your prayer requests that you share with us. But uh, we do look forward to taking this time uh, to be uh, in God's Word and uh, certainly hope that you remain in God's Word as well. Trust that the Holy Spirit will reveal to you that which He wants you to hear. Uh, be in community of faith and uh, challenge those people in the community to grow in their own faith as you are growing in yours. But uh, thanks for joining us today, and I certainly hope you have a blessed day. Bye-bye.